Hello there, dear viewer. Thank you for joining me for another Boutique Blu-ray collection update, where I go through a lot of the films that I have been watching and enjoying lately. It's been a couple of weeks since I last made one of these updates because, you know, life gets in the way. I've been unwell, my dog has been unwell, and there's just been a whole load of other stuff just being thrown this way. But even in busy, frantic times such as this, I still make plenty of time to watch a lot of great films. And in 2024, we are continuing to get so many things coming to physical media, often for the first time. And it's a very exciting time to be a collector. So hopefully with this video, I can give you a couple of recommendations and perhaps you take these and discover something new for yourself. As always, I'll keep things quite brief just so we can get through everything in good time. But if you do have any further questions for me about these releases or about the films in particular, then please just drop a comment on this video and I'll be happy to get back to you. So we begin with what is a big release for many horror fans. It's the 4K edition of Your Next. This is from Second Sight Films and they've done one of their lovely limited edition hardbound boxes. This film came out around 10 years ago, probably a bit longer than that actually, directed by Adam Wingard, who has gone on to do some interesting big blockbuster films in Hollywood. But with Your Next, we have a home invasion slash movie that has a lot of grisly kills and some real tension and suspense that I think is so well executed. Now the film was shot digitally, but it looks like during this 4K restoration, the filmmakers have gone and added a layer of fake grain to make it look like it was shot on film. Now this may be controversial to a lot of people. It is following this trend that we're seeing where filmmakers revise the appearance of how films looked when they came out theatrically. Whether that is something that could put you off this release, well, that is going to be up to you. But I do think the film looks very good on the 4K disc and Second Sight have put together a wonderful package with lots of great special features. Inside the box, you get the selection of art cards. This adds to my growing collection of art cards. There is a thick booklet as always with some brilliant writings and some stills from behind the scenes, etc. And then you get the film on a 4K disc and a Blu-ray disc, but both of these have the same content. So it's another great release from Second Sight. It isn't one of my favorites of the year from them, but they have had an absolutely stellar output. And that's mainly down to this film just not being as liked by myself as some of the others like Mean Streets, for example. But for fans who love this film, I mean, this is an absolute no brainer for you to get. Now I want to talk about this film, La Chimera, from director Alice Rohrwacher, starring Josh O'Connor, who many of us will have seen in Challengers earlier this year. This is a very different kind of film, but he turns in an equally great performance in this one. Now I want to say right off the bat that I absolutely loved this film, and it's one of my favorite things that I've seen in the past couple of years, to be honest. The film follows this group of young people in rural Italy who go around robbing graves to sell on valuable goods that have been buried with people. And I don't know quite how to put it, but the film has a very comfortable, nostalgic feel. The way it's been shot feels like it's a film that could have been made 40 or 50 years ago. It has a beautiful appearance and the film goes to some very interesting places and it's one that has just stuck in my mind ever since I first saw it. If you're a fan of world cinema, and I have to imagine if you're watching this video, you are, please check out this film. And the Curzon Blu-ray does come with a conversation with Alice Rohrwacke on the special features. So this gets my highest recommendation. Another very interesting recent release, also a quite a nostalgic film, is this one, Riddle of Fire, directed by Weston Rizzuli. This is about a group of young children who go on this quest to get blueberries for a blueberry pie that is needed for their sick mother. That might sound like a very boring setup, but the whole film is constructed as though it is some grand fantasy epic story. And this is done through the music, the design choices, costumes, the dialogue. All of this makes it feel like it's some kind of mythical fairy tale set in modern day. This Blu-ray from Icon Distribution was the first time I was watching this film and I had a great time with it and I'm very eager to re-watch it. My only concern watching it on the first time was it did feel like it kind of run its course 
by about 90 minutes and then it goes to almost two hours in length so I, I hate saying that films run too long because some of my favorite films of all time are very long films but here it did feel like it could have been a bit more concise but I will see what I think when I rewatch it soon. Next I had the absolute pleasure of watching the A24 Blu-ray edition of I Saw the TV Glow. This is from director Jane Schoenbrunn. This is another film that is calling back to childhood memories and nostalgia and often the painful memories that we have from childhood. This film really feels like it's calling back to the 80s and 90s VHS era and there are some callbacks to things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer which I really enjoyed seeing in the film because I'm a big fan of Buffy. This is a film that has already made itself very important to a lot of people. If you go on Letterboxd and look at some of the reviews, lots of people give this five stars because it speaks directly to their own experience. Jane Schoenbrunn is a trans filmmaker and this film directly speaks to a lot of people who have gone through similar things in their life. And while that's not something I can directly relate to, I can see a lot of what's going on in this film could be very powerful and impactful to people. It's also just a great film to look at and to listen to. The design of the whole thing is very good indeed. And there's some great things in the A24 package. There's a commentary on here as well, which is very fascinating. So another great addition from A24. Next, I have a stack of indicator Blu-rays, which I'm very excited to talk about because as always, they are putting out some really interesting films with some great care to special features and the overall presentation. And this first one I want to talk about has been a real surprise for me. It's the film Bruiser. This is directed by George A. Romero from the year 2000. So this is later on in his career. Bruiser is about this man who lives quite an ordinary but successful life, but he is very passive in his own life. He has you know, what people would call today NPC syndrome, being a non-playable character in your own video game. But then circumstances lead him to having this mask which is stuck on his face and no one can tell who he is. And this anonymity that he now has is empowering and it frees him to do and say whatever he wants, which does also include getting some revenge and things get a bit bloody. I had never seen this film before the indicator release, but I had an absolutely great time with it. And I'm quite surprised to see a lot of people talking quite negatively about this when you look on Letterboxd. A lot of people might be comparing it to Romero's previous work, you know, the big hits like Dawn of the Dead, for example. Whereas this film is more in tone with his film Martin, which got a 4K release not too long ago. I think Romero is doing some very interesting things in this film and it is well worth a reappraisal because it's looking at all sorts of issues about personality and fitting into society and how one can react to things that we deem as being wrong in our own communities. The film looks absolutely beautiful on the 4K from the original negative and Indicator have had a great track record since they have started doing 4K discs. I've got a few of the genre land films on the shelf behind me and they have all looked absolutely pristine and beautiful and Bruiser is no exception to that one. It is also absolutely stacked with special features. I really enjoyed listening to the archival audio commentary from 2001 with George A. Romero. And there's all sorts of extra stuff here to do with Bruiser and the filmmakers. And there is a great booklet as well with some great writings about the film. So this has been one of my favorite releases of the past few months. And I think near the end of the year, this is going to be ranking quite highly on my favorite releases of the year. Next, I'll quickly talk about Obsession. This is Edward Dmitrich's English noir film, which is quite strange because he made a lot of films in Hollywood, but here he's making quite an English noir story about this jealous husband who traps and then keeps captive one of his wife's supposed lovers. It's a very fascinating film about power and control and revenge and a, a man's own insecurities and jealousies. And make no mistake that Edward Dmitrich is one of those key figures in film noir and here in this film we see a lot of that expertise on display. It's also a film that I think would make a great double bill with another film released by Indicator some years ago, 
uh, William Wyler's The Collector, because that is also about someone keeping someone captive against their will and looking at their relationship over the course of the film. So that could be a great indicator double bill for any indicator collectors out there. There's a ton of great special features on here. There's a brand new audio commentary, which I highly enjoyed. And if you get the limited edition while it's still in stock, there's a booklet as well. Next, I have two films from director George King that Indicator have done 4K scans of and have presented here on these brand new Blu-rays. First of all, we have The Shop at Sly Corner, which is a fantastic film about this antiques dealer who has this shop, but he's been blackmailed by this young man because of something in his past. And this blackmail leads to murder. It's one of those hidden gems of British cinema that most people will have never heard of. I certainly hadn't before Indicator announced this release but it is fantastic. And in particular, the central performance from Oscar Homolka was one that I just couldn't stop watching. This new restoration from a 4K scan by Indicator looks beautiful on the Blu-ray. And there are some great special features. There's a new audio commentary on here and some other things about the film and the director. So another fantastic release from Indicator. Then we come to Tomorrow We Live, another one from George King and another hidden gem of British cinema from the period. This is about a French soldier who is looking to flee the Nazis and make it to England, but he discovers some secrets about submarines that are being used in the war and this puts him in some real danger. And lots of great special features, including another audio commentary from the same folks that did it on this release. So you do get lots here after watching the film. I had a fantastic time with these George King films, a director I didn't know much about at all. So these have really filled in a gap in my own film knowledge. And for that, I'm very thankful to Indicator for. Then we come to The Whole Truth, directed by John Gilliman, who made a, a number of fantastic films in his career. The film is about a famous movie producer who has this affair with a, a famous actress. She ends up being found dead and he's implicated in her murder. However, the movie producer's wife doesn't believe that he did it, so she seeks to kind of clear his name. And there's a lot of twist and turn things in this film. And uh, I, I just found it really engaging. I loved all of the performances here with some great actors that you might know from the period. It's one of those films that, although it is about murder, there was something quite cosy about this film. I don't know what it is. These films from this period, which could be dealing with very serious topics, I just find so easy to watch. And, you know, that's a great thing. And I had a real great time with this film. Again, I'm repeating myself here, but Indicator do not slack on the special features. I loved the audio commentary on this, which I listened to when doing the dishes after watching this film. And the booklet that comes with it has some great stuff inside as well. So another fantastic release from Indicator. The last Indicator one to talk about is Single White Female from director Barbe Schroeder. Here he was making a film that is in the kind of Hollywood vein and it's starring Jennifer Jason Leigh and Bridget Fonda. This is a film all about obsession and control and paranoia and gaslighting. Bridget Fonda plays this young woman who is looking for a new roommate and she's having trouble finding the right person to move in with her. And then Jennifer Jason Leigh turns up and she seems like she's a lovely, nice girl. But then she becomes very controlling of Bridget Fonda's character and things get quite dark, quite serious and quite out of control. It's a film that gets very melodramatic at times, but I think that is part of its, its charm here. Personally, I think it's a very good film from a great director. And what Indicator have done with this package with all of the special features is provide a kind of, not reappraisal, but analyze this film in a new way because from what I know from the time, I mean, I was only one year old when this came out, but the film kind of came and went. It wasn't a massive kind of film that has been talked about in the decades since, but here they are providing some new analysis. And I think there's a lot in this film that we could look at today, kind of reflect upon. And it's a film that goes to some very interesting places. So I had a great time with the Indicator Blu-ray. As always, I'm a broken record, but there are some fantastic special features, way too many for me to just read and list here. So do go and seek this one out if you want something that is 
quite a crazy experience. Next up, a release that has just come out is Pharaoh. This is from Second Run Films. This is a Polish film from director Jerzy Kawalarowicz. I hope I'm saying that right. I do struggle with the Polish names sometimes. And this is quite a one of a kind film because this is an ancient Egyptian sort of biblical epic style told story but made by the Polish film industry. You don't see those often, so when I first heard about this film some years ago, I really wanted to see it. But it was quite hard to see, and before this it had only had one release on Blu-ray in Poland as part of Martin Scorsese's World Cinema uh, Polish Masterpieces box set, which was too expensive for me to import, so I was just keeping my fingers crossed that we would get a native release. And here we are with the second run disc. The film is exceptional. I think this is a wonderful film with some beautifully shot scenes, great location shooting. They did shoot some of it in Egypt, but by the 1960s it had already turned into this big tourist destination. So the filmmakers were restricted in what they could shoot actually by the pyramids. But a lot of this was shot in Uzbekistan, in one of the deserts there and it looks absolutely fantastic. The film opens with this incredible tracking shot of one of the characters running through these crowds of soldiers, and it's just absolutely breathtaking. And the film just keeps that energy throughout its two and a half hour runtime. The film is based on a late 19th century Polish novel, which I haven't read because it doesn't seem like there are any good English translations out there. The disc also includes some great special features, including a lengthy discussion on the film and the original novel and its position in Polish cinema, which I found so enlightening and I learned so much from that particular special feature. Now, the only real negative point to talk about with this particular release is in the presentation of the film itself. The 2K restoration was done in Poland and I believe it is the same source as was used in that uh, big Polish box set that was released many years ago. Because the film does exhibit an overuse of digital noise reduction. So a lot of the grain has been scrubbed from the image. This is at the restoration level. So I must clarify that this isn't something that Second Run have gone in and done to the film. No, this is the file that has been provided to them from Poland for this release. That 2K restoration is described as being overseen and supervised by the original cinematographer of the film. And it's just unfortunate that the film looks this way. And it's quite obvious that digital noise reduction has been used because no film from the 1960s would look like this. Even though a lot of the actors in the film had to use heavy makeup to darken their skin, and shooting in the desert would have caused effects with this, it wouldn't have made their skin look as smooth as it does in the image on this film. So that's something to be aware of, that the film does have this appearance of being overly smooth and being tinkered with digital noise reduction. It's a shame, but on the other hand, I'm just so happy to have the film and be able to watch it readily on this disc. And it's highly, highly unlikely that this film will ever undergo another restoration that would solve a lot of the issues in the image. So this is about as good as it's going to get. And for those great special features that I mentioned, this is a fantastic release from Second Run. And I can't wait to see what they're doing next because they are ramping up their release schedule again after a brief hiatus. And I just absolutely love what they do. I have loads of their releases on the shelf behind me. So I'm a big fan. Next, I have the shameless Blu-ray release of Who Saw Her Die? This is starring George Lazenby, James Bond himself, from the early 1970s. And Lazenby plays a sculptor who is in Venice with his family and his young daughter is tragically murdered. So this ends up fueling this investigation of who is the murderer? We need to catch the murderer. That is on the loose. This is of course in the Jalo style, so there's a lot of the kind of typical Jalo trappings here. So if you are a fan of that type of film, there's a lot to like in this. And it's interesting to look at this as a Venice film, particularly because this comes just a year or so, or a year or two, before Don't Look Now from Nicholas Rogue. And there's a lot of images and things in this film which do evoke don't look now, except this came first. So I don't know if this would have been on Nicholas Rogue's radar at all, 
but it's just interesting to compare the two films and look at some similarities and Shameless have done a great job presenting this from a 2k scan of the original negative so the film looks great on here and there are a bunch of great special features so I've really been enjoying what Shameless have been doing in recent times I think they've kind of changed their strategy with their releases and I'm all for it because they've been doing some great work recently. Next I have two releases from Eureka Entertainment, one of my favourite labels of all time. Here we have two very different releases. We have some of the early silent short films of Laurel and Hardy and then we have an early Kinji Fukusaku film. There still remain some haters that always call out Eureka when they do their announcements saying why is it all just Hong Kong martial arts movies? Well here are two releases that are not Hong Kong martial arts releases and they are also great. However, I don't think these two releases are going to shut up the haters, unfortunately, but nevertheless, that's a, a vocal minority. I think Eureka are doing excellent work. The film Wolves, Pigs and Men from Kinji Fukusaku is one that, if people are familiar with the filmmaker's work, there's a lot to kind of recognise here. It's about these young men who are born into poverty, who of course are forced into a life of crime and how there are disputes between the boys, disagreements and how things sort of escalate from there. It's a great film and a great one to kind of fit into Fukusaku's filmography to kind of see things that would be here evolve into things later on down the line. But standing on its own it's a fantastic film with some gorgeous imagery as well so I think it's a fantastic release from Eureka and yet another film that I can add to my Fukusaku library. We also have the Laurel and Hardy short films from Eureka. These are fantastic and something that I love is the all of the extras on this release. It's a special two disc edition and there are tons of new audio commentaries across these shorts. I mean just look at how many special features are on this release. If you are in any way a fan of silent cinema comedy cinema or Laurel and Hardy. I mean this is a no-brainer to get. This is a fantastic release and I strongly recommend people checking this one out even if you're not too sure if you like silent cinema etc. These are very digestible. They are short films. There's a lot of physical comedy here, some great gags and I just had an absolutely wonderful time going through all of these. And yeah, it's just it's just wonderful to have this kind of stuff on physical media, readily available, and I will enjoy this for many, many years to come. Now from Studio Canal, as part of their Vintage Classics line, there is The Weak and the Wicked. This is a female prison story about these characters where, well, the main character is very much a middle-class woman who is kind of put into a female prison and this is not a story that you would have seen a lot at the time. Prison stories were very focused on working class characters and here they were able to shine a light on different dynamics between class but also kind of show that people aren't really that different across classes when you strip away all the things that sort of define class. It's a wonderful film with great performances and like I just mentioned it has this really interesting social commentary which watching from a modern perspective there is a lot to analyse and look into here and it's from the director J. Lee Thompson who made a ton of great films in his career so it's great to see this early entry and it's a fantastic release with some great special features. We also have No Trees in the Street. This is another J. Lee Thompson story, again looking at class. This time we're looking at a working class family who are living in this area in the 1930s, which we also see in the 1960s when it is flattened and a new apartment tower is built. So in many ways this is about escaping class situations or about gentrification and the central character here she has this younger brother who is involved in this life of crime which she wants to help him escape but she could also help her family escape their situation by getting involved with this man who is from a sort of better off background so again this is a great social commentary and great to watch looking back because Although this might feel old-fashioned, might feel like this kind of thing doesn't happen today, this kind of thing very much does happen today. And in terms of the looking at uh, new buildings being built over existing communities, it reminded me a lot of the film City of Hope 
from John Sayles. Although tonally very different, this film is looking at very much similar themes. So a great release from Studio Canal with some great special features as well. This next one is Three Men in a Boat. This is from director Ken Anakin. This is an adaptation of the very famous novel Three Men in a Boat from Jerome K. Jerome. The book is still a classic book, which I urge anyone to read if they just want a delightful, easygoing read. It's about these three men who decide to escape from their wives by hopping in a boat and going down the River Thames. And it's about the things that they experience along the way on this journey. The story has been adapted for film a number of times. Uh, this is the 1956 version and I have to say out of all of the versions I have watched this is the weakest adaptation. It's trying to distance itself somewhat from the original novel by changing the uh, time period that it's set in and the film kind of veers more towards carry-on humour than the kind of humour that was in the original book. So unfortunately it's, a, it's an adaptation that just doesn't work for me, particularly if you haven't read the book and you aren't particularly fond of the story etc. Um, there's probably not a lot for you here. I think quite a lot of the humour falls flat and the performances just don't capture the spirit of these characters. Next I have a stack of not boutique Blu-rays but these are all Blu-rays from the US that were released by Sony under Sony Picture Classics or Columbia Pictures. These are all films that had never come to Blu-ray before, at least in the US or the UK, as far as I'm aware. And it's worth noting that all of these are region free. So if you're not in the US, these are still well worth importing if you're interested in the particular titles. So let's briefly talk about them. The first one is The Vertical Ray of the Sun. This is from French Vietnamese director Tran An Hung, who I recently talked about with his recent film The Taste of Things, which is beautiful. This is another beautiful film. This story focuses on these three women living in modern day Hanoi in Vietnam, and it's looking at their relationships towards one another because their parents are no longer around. We also see their relationships with men and how this affects each and every one of them. The film is beautiful to look at. I love the setting, the location, the, the design of the whole film. It's very easy going, although it has like tragic moments in the film. It's a very beautiful touching film and very easy to watch. This is I mean this in a good way. This is like ASMR cinema. If you don't know what ASMR is, go and look it up. But this film has that kind of feeling of just being comfortable and cosy. And a lot of that is in the sound design and just the visual design of the film and the performances. It's fantastic. I strongly recommend people who are fans of world cinema to go and check this one out. Then we have Shotgun Stories, a film from Jeff Nichols. And this was a Jeff Nichols film that was missing on Blu-ray for a very long time. And I've been a real fan of some of his more recent works in the past decade or so. I love the likes of Take Shelter and Mud. And I haven't seen his latest film, uh, The Bike Riders. So I really want to see that. It comes out on 4K pretty soon, I think. But here we're going back to one of his earlier films, which is another family story, a family drama. The story is about these two sets of half-brothers who each knew their father at different periods in his life. So the first set of brothers knew him when he was an alcoholic and he just wasn't a good father. And then the other brothers knew him when he was sober and he, you know, he was a better person. And there is this conflict between these two groups that really drives the drama in the film. And I think it's wonderfully made and yeah, I urge more people to go and see this, particularly if you like Jeff Nichols' later works. Then we have The Burglars. This is a heist criminal film starring Omar Sharif and Jean-Paul Belmondo. And this is such a fantastic film, which I'm so glad has had a good release. I'll, I'll preface though that there are two cuts of this film which are quite different. There is the US cut and then there is the European language cut. And supposedly the film was shot twice, or at least these two versions were made at the same time. Both versions are presented here. However, the English language version has some problems with the colour in the image. It looks very desaturated when comparing it to the international version. So for that reason, with this release, I can only really recommend it for that international version, which looks a lot better than the US one. 
but it's a thrilling film with a great score from Ennio Morricone. So do seek this one out, although it is a shame about the US version, and I do wonder if there will be any sort of replacement disc for this. Probably not. So just be aware of that, that this release is not perfect. Then we have Cat Baloo. This is a Western spoof movie starring Jane Fonda and Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin plays two different characters in this film, which is kind of great to see him doing these two different performances. Sorry, if you can hear the neighbor's dog, he's going nuts outside for some reason. So I'll carry on, but I do apologize for the dog outside. Yeah, this is a spoof Western, and the Western genre by this point had already kind of reached its sort of pinnacle. So this was very much laying the ground for the revisionist Westerns that would come later on. And of course, Blazing Saddles, which I have to imagine has taken some sort of inspiration from this film. It's a wonderful film with some great music, great fun performances, and it's great to have it on a Blu-ray. The last of these Sony releases is Man's Castle. This is a Frank Bozzaghi movie starring Spencer Tracy. This is a pre-code film from 1933, where he plays this man who is living in poverty. He has barely any money at all, and he lives in this area where all the other people who have no money live. And he ends up meeting this homeless girl who she thinks that he's kind of a bit more well off than he actually is. And they strike up this relationship but it is looking at the tragic circumstances of people living in poverty. And this is a pre-code film, so this is not shying away from some of the sort of uglier details of this. And I think it's a fantastic film. It's only 78 minutes, but this film, before this release, had not been seen like this. There was some footage that was lost, which I believe has been now found for this and has been inserted into the film. So for fans of Frank Bozzaghi movies or for pre-code stories, this is absolutely fantastic and a wonderful release from Sony. I'll just end on something big. It's Star Trek Discovery. Now I know this isn't a film, I know this isn't a boutique Blu-ray, but this did just get a big Blu-ray release in this box set of all five seasons of the TV show. And I've been working my way through it because I'd seen some of the first two seasons before, but I hadn't seen any of the later stuff. And it's just easy watching for me. I like having this on in the background, and I know that sounds like a backhanded compliment, but it is very enjoyable to watch. Is this the best Star Trek series that has ever existed? I mean, most people would say no, and that, that's a fair point. But there is a lot here that I really enjoy, and I'm enjoying working my way through this. I haven't got to the final season yet, so I can't quite give my thoughts on how it ends. Uh, I know there's been some divided opinions on how the series does end. If you get this Blu-ray box set, it comes in this hardbound case, which I have sort of damaged already. Well, I didn't damage it. It arrived in the post like this. And uh, it's in this DVD sized case, which I'm not a fan of these cases. If I open it up, it's in these stacked kind of disc things. Now, obviously they're trying to fit as many discs into a small package as they possibly can. If anyone else has been watching this, has any thoughts on this, do let me know because yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I have heard the quality dips a bit towards the end, like season four, season five, but you know, I'm intrigued and I will carry on watching. So that was everything I have been watching in my recent absence. There's a lot of stuff here. I am losing my voice because I've been talking so long about these now but hopefully you can take some of these as recommendations for things to go and get. If you want to stick around on the channel, then just click the video that's presented on screen right now. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.